Is 3D printing really ready for prime time? Is it possible with 3D prints to make something that the average consumer would look at and use and would have that look and feel that they expect for a product to have? Well, in my latest Kickstarter, Cthulhu and Friends, which is live on Kickstarter right now, I'm attempting to answer that question. Now, for those who don't use 3D printing all the time, who aren't quite used to it, that look of 3D printing is just not desirable. It looks just a little too flat, a little too matte, a little too layery. And when they look close and see layer lines, they think, is that gonna break along those? Now, maybe in five or 10 or 20 years, people will get over that, but right now there is an expectation from consumers of how a thing should look, and 3D printing isn't that. Now, my initial idea for how to overcome this in Cthulhu and Friends was to use Silk PLA. Silk PLA makes the prints look real shiny, and in my experience, it's the material that people who aren't used to 3D prints look at most favorably. But there is another option, an option that with just a little bit of post-processing, you can make those layer lines completely disappear and your 3D prints end up looking just like an injection molded part, just like the sort of part that most consumers associate with professional. Now, a little while ago, I experimented with a material called PolySmooth from Polymaker. PolySmooth prints just like PLA at PLA temperatures, but after the print is done, if you hit it with just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, the outside kind of melts together and it becomes a perfectly smooth 3D print. Now, to facilitate doing this, Polymaker also sells their Polisher or Polisher. I have a hard time pronouncing it, but the idea is that it's a fancy machine that in a fancy way you load up the prints and then lower them down into the chamber where it vaporizes isopropyl alcohol and applies it to your 3D print. Now, using the Polisher actually has a couple of advantages because with this dial, you can precisely tell it how much smoothing you want your parts to have so you don't accidentally over smooth them and just turn it into a blobby mess, which is pretty cool. But the polisher has a downside, especially when working with models of the scale that I'm working with in Cthulhu and Friends. The plate that they give for you to put your parts on, it's got these little raised bumps. And the idea is that the alcohol can get underneath your part as well, but uh, they're too far spread apart. My little pieces, it's hard to balance them on there. You gotta find three that you can get them on, and if you do it wrong, and then as it's lowering down, there's a chance that one is gonna fall over. It's just gonna domino the whole batch. So I had to make a little modification for mine. I remodeled the plate in Blender and gave it just a ton of tiny little points for you to lay your pieces on. Now it's much easier for me to be able to stand my pieces on this plate for polishing. I also made a bigger version of this with more holes in it for a different smoothing process that we'll be talking about in the future. But I posted about this on Twitter and asked people what they thought it was. And a lot of people said that it was the forbidden pizza. I mean, I like the answer that said it was a good head scratcher. Oh, I could get addicted to this. Oh. For my experiments, I was going to need a lot more PolySmooth. For the premium models, I'm using the Bamboo Labs AMS to include up to four colors in each of the models. That means that I was going to need at least four colors of PolySmooth, and there's actually not a whole lot of overlap between different models about which colors go into them, so I was going to basically need four colors per model with slight overlap. That's a lot of PolySmooth. And fortunately, my friends at Polymaker reached out to me and, and actually offered to give me the filament for these experiments, to which I said, guys, that is too generous. I, I couldn't possibly... <sighs> well, if you insist. Big thanks to my friends at Polymaker for providing the PolySmooth for these experiments.
The question that I was trying to answer with these experiments was if you take a multicolor 3D print and put it through the smoothing process, what happens to the colors that are right next to each other? Do they melt into each other? Do they bleed into each other? Will they stay separated enough to look good? That's what I needed to know. So I wanted to start with a model that had some high contrast colors right next to each other, preferably black and white. And fortunately, I had a couple of really excellent candidates. Yogg Sathoth, the horror of Dunwich, the flying spaghetti monster, the eyeballs and tentacles monster. I love this guy. He's a lot of fun. He's a model that I've seen printed by a lot of other people. So I know that a lot of people like him, but he also has white eyes with black pupils. So I thought he'd be a perfect one to start with. I printed off a batch in my Bamboo Labs AMS and put it through the poly smooth. And the result was amazing. Not only did the black and white not bleed together, they almost stayed completely separated while the whole thing took on an injection molding smoothed finish. And comparing the smoothed model to the silk PLA model, I only had to look at them for one second and I immediately knew which one was superior. Crap. Because PolySmooth does have a couple of negatives, downsides that I hate to bring up, but I gotta mention. To start with, PolySmooth is a little bit more expensive than regular PLA. In fact, it's more expensive in two different ways. First of all, the individual spools are more expensive than a spool of regular or even silk PLA. But more than that, the PolySmooth spools are only three quarters of a kilogram, whereas most PLA spools are one kilogram. So in other words, it's a higher price and shrinkflation. Yeesh. But really, the material cost was never the most expensive part of this project. And what we're talking about is a difference of a couple of pennies at most per piece. So while it is more expensive, it's not prohibitively more expensive. It just means that I'm going to have to, you know, have more upfront costs in my material, but I'll make it up in the end. But then there's the question of color selection. Now, Polymaker does make PolySmooth in an array of colors, but it's not nearly the array of colors that I can get silk PLA in or regular PLA in. So if I want to use PolySmooth, I'm gonna to have to limit the palette that I can use. And that's kind of a little bit of a problem. Some of the models I designed with colors that just don't exist in PolySmooth, and I'm gonna to have to get creative in which ones I choose in the final if I'm going to stick with PolySmooth. And then there's some models, like the Nephron Ka model, which I initially planned for him to have a gold staff and a gold shoulder piece, and if I gotta do it in yellow, I guess I gotta do it in yellow, but what if? I printed a batch of Nephrin Caw pieces using silk PLA in the shoulders, and at the end, that print failed entirely. A couple of them failed a little bit high, and I, I canceled them, and then a couple of them failed a little bit more, and then I left it for a little bit too long, and they all just domino killed each other. You can learn a lot from failure. And what I wanted to learn from these test prints was whether Poly Smooth and Silk PLA would stick to each other. And sure enough, with the entire plate falling apart, obviously that wasn't going to work. Looking at the failures, it was clear that it was definitely where the Silk was trying to stick to the Poly Smooth, that it just was having none of it over and over again. But even looking at these prints, it was obvious that the Poly Smooth didn't want to stick to the silk. In these models, there's a part where the mummy wrap around Nephron Ka's arm goes down and touches the staff that he's holding. And this is a little bit of design cleverness. It acts kind of as a support, but it incorporates itself into the design so that the part itself doesn't need to have supports. But looking at these prints, it was obvious that the poly smooth was having nothing of sticking to the silk PLA as well. Now, experimentally, I did put them 
through the polisher just to see if there would be like a big visual disconnect. Would the layer lines on the Silk PLA, hidden as they are by the shininess of the Silk PLA, clash with the overall smoothness of the poly smooth parts? And looking at them, I don't think that they clash badly. I think that it actually looks rather good. The Silk PLA is shiny and gold. The polish smooth is smooth and beautiful. It's just a shame that they won't work together in the end. So if I'm going to use Poly Smooth, and I do want to use Poly Smooth because it looks so good, I'm going to have to stick myself to the Poly Smooth color palette as I'm making these monsters. A little bit limiting, but overcoming limitations as part of being an artist. Now I have heard that there are other manufacturers other than Polymaker making a Poly Smooth like material. So it's possible that there might be other colors through them, but I'm no traitor. While I was doing my experiments and working on them, I was sharing the results of these on my Discord at discord.3dpprofessor.com and members of my Discord were commenting on it and basically confirming what I had already figured out. That polished smooth parts look really good and they look professional. But then one member of my Discord asked a killer question. They said, what about ABS? To which my response was, oh, well, I guess my experimenting isn't done yet. Now I've got to figure out whether ABS is a reasonable way to do this. So we'll talk about that in the next video. But that's it for this video. I want to thank you very much for watching, and I want to remind you that you are a child of God, so you're special to me. So take care of yourself, and if you can, someone else too. I'll see you next time. It's slow, but it's so satisfying.